Hey, you can pose gloves here, and this is another video in the how to make your first song in FL12. And today we're going to cover the sequencer. Now, you see, I have all sorts of things loaded up, sort of a practical example of a typical project. This is a really simple beat, just sort of a, a passing project, and it was fun to work on. And I chose this because it's got examples of pretty much everything you're going to do. So we can see here that I have all these sorts of different patterns going on. Uh, we see here, I do not use the folders, but you can see here I have all sorts of different patterns with different pieces going on. I've got some bells and some synthesizers and I've got my drums up here. I've got my mixer, which we'll cover in the next video. And I've dragged sounds. I've pretty much used everything I've talked about and I use it in every project, but we're gonna cover the sequencer and the typical techniques I use when I'm in the sequencer. So we have here some, if I play the beginning here, turn the drums off, you see our synthesizer's changing and it's changing very nicely. This is done using automation clips. So in here, I've talked about automation clips, but this is an example. So, uh, a quick note, if you have a pattern, you can click the pattern to change your uh, channel rack to that pattern. So you don't have to go up here and go searching through everything. You just click. If you double click, it'll open a MIDI in one of the instruments in that pattern too. Another good note. But anyways, we have our Harmer. And the way I did this was I right clicked and said create an automation clip. And it did. And when I created that automation clip, I made sure I had an area selected. So if I select an area and create a clip, so I right click whatever I want to do, any knob pretty much. So I select the knob I want to click and I create automation clip. And it creates a clip the size of the selection I have. So to make this selection, you hold down control, drag on the number line. Very nice. You right click to and, and drag to delete stuff. So I covered navigating in the second video, so I'm hoping you watch that. These automation clips are controlling just various knobs and changing the sequencer, I mean, the synthesizer in a dynamic way. And we have our MIDI, which is using the step sequencer. MIDI is basically the signals that are sent to tell things to trigger, turn off. They help control behavior of audio signals in a DAW. That's just like generally what MIDI does. And you have, I'm triggering the kicks and stuff and you know, these these things are related to a plugin that I got rid of, so don't even worry about that madness. But these are automation clips, so when you see things like this, and there's a various settings you can have on your automation clips. Right now it's on a single curve, so I can change this curve to behave like so. I can add points by right-clicking. I can right-click a point to delete it or change its mode. So I can change it from single curve to like smooth stairs, and I can grab this middle um, handle thing and it will allow me to change that as you can see here change through the various settings and dragging the point up or down will change how it responds so we change it back to single curve and go back like this you can also hit uh, right click to set it back to its default value I believe it just goes to linear if you want to get fancy but I don't know but yes so that is automation clips real quick uh, now to lay down patterns, you must make sure you have your pattern selected or audio clip if you have audio clips. Like I have an audio clip over here. So that is composing gloves. Very cool. Composing gloves. And that is not in a pattern. That's like its own thing. Audio clips can do junk like that. So that's why audio is like a whole separate folder. Composing gloves. Where that's at. Um, so you have your pattern on and you've selected it in here. So we want our hi-hat pattern and with the paint tool selected, you can just drop a ton of these on there and you right click to delete them. You can also use the draw tool, which will drop one at a time and you can click and drag to move around. Uh, draw tool is nice, but I like the paint tool more and you can just click the pattern you or group of patterns. It's the same way with the piano roll. So you can select patterns. And move them around and you can select just one pattern move it around i'll uh, hold down control and click somewhere else to get rid of your selection if you're wondering how i got rid of that selection and that's moving patterns around that's what that is 
you have this nifty back and forth thing. And so if you have a piece of audio you want to scroll through or a pattern you want to scroll through, you can grab your pattern and move it around. So if you have a really long pattern and you've only want a section of it, so you say, I'm going to make a crazy drum loop right here and I'm going to take some of this loop and some of that loop and I'm going to shrink this one down and make this one like that. And then you want to preview options. So you like, you're like, oh, I don't like that. What if I drag it over like this and you select this menu and you drag this one, you're scoring through the various, you're scoring through the various things you have available there. So that's what that's for. And the chop tool does exactly what it looks like. It chops things. And it's nice because you can chop things up and delete middle parts or just take a segment away. And the way I did that is the exact same way you do it in the piano roll. You uh, hold down shift and drag and then you let go of shift to move up and down while still holding down the mouse button. So that's how you do that. And you can hold down control and select a variety of things and do the exact same thing. So that's how you do that. If you want to know how to do the delete thing, I mean, it's control Z, but you have to hold down. So let's say I did something. And I, oh, I didn't want to do those four things. So I hold down control Z. It only toggles through the one option. So you have to hold down control alt Z to get rid of multiple options. And you can set the amount of undos in uh, file settings, some settings somewhere. You can change the amount you have if you want more undos than that. So amongst the other practical things I do in here that would kind of get you running, you have your tracks, you can right click and all the settings are pretty self-explanatory. You can rename and color your tracks and do all sorts of stuff. Um, <clears throat> putting something in a track, if you're familiar with another doll, does not move it into its own mixer track. It still has to be assigned whatever's in your pattern clip. So just so you know, because that's how it is in some DAWs. You add a track and then boom, it's assigned to your mixer track and you're good to go. Not so with FL Studio, it's a little different. So you also have these three clips up here. And now the most important one, at least I feel like it's the most important one, because it's the one I use. The other ones I'm not gonna really cover because I just don't use them that much, is this guy right here, your automation clip. So you've got an automation clip and you're being real particular about how something is. Well, laying down points can get kind of meticulous if they don't do what you want them to do. And so you lay down a point and right now, our point moves, if we click it and we drag it, it moves in between these two points. But if I put slide, it'll slide all the other points around with my point. If I click, if I unclick slide and click step, and I can draw points, which can be useful for envelopes. If I right click to delete points, it deletes them as I go over them, which is a real nice way of deleting points. And if I hold down step and slide, it behaves relatively the same. It doesn't slide anything around. It slides lie. You also notice that it gets rid of redundant points, which is kind of nice. Uh, so that's what step and slide do. Really important. Uh, but if you if you have slide on, and you put a point down, uh, in order to delete that point, you actually have to right click it to delete it. Versus if you have step on, it just deletes it when you scroll over it. So that could be really nifty. That's what those do. Um, your cell snap settings effect here. We've talked about that already. And those are the things I pretty much use. You can hear what's in here by clicking the playlist button right here. You can also mute channels, I mean tracks by clicking right here. Right click to solo a track, right click it again to unmute, but it unmutes everything. So if you have, maybe you have a vocal takes that you've been lining up right here, you will need to also go through and remute those if you don't want them to be heard. A quick note about patterns, you can right click or not right click. You can just click up here in the little corner of each pattern. You can actually replace it with other patterns. Like we could put pattern 16 here instead or whatever, but we want it to be pattern one. Instead of deleting and selecting up here what you want and putting it in, if that's something you wanna do. If you're clicking right here and it's not popping in a place and you say there's space there, has to do with your snap setting. If you have a snap setting on something like one half step, it's gonna say, I can't put the pattern there because there's this pattern's in the way. So you have to make sure they have it to the appropriate snap setting cell. So it says, oh, and you have to click at the correct spot. So if I click over here, it says there's not enough room, this pattern's in the way. So you might have to put it down here and drag it up. But uh, because we have it on our correct cell setting, we know it's exactly four beats long. I can click just in the first box and it will put it there. So that's important if you're clicking and for whatever reason your pattern's not going down. 
Um, there is a way to mute patterns so that you don't have to do this. It will automatically mute them. So if you do have those vocal takes and you are muting and soloing stuff to hear things so you can mix and things, then that would be nice. So how do you mute a clip? Well, it gets weird. This is how I know how to do it. Um, you will hold down alt, but it's gotta be the alt on, if you're sitting at your keyboard, it's the alt on your right, the right side of your space bar. It's gotta be that alt. And that way when you mute things and you unmute them, they stay muted they will not be affected by muting a channel. As you see, it stays muted. So you, that may be something you want to do. That is an option. I think you can also click this guy up here and it as well does it. And you click them again to unmute them. So I guess there is a second way. But as you can see, the, the icons are pretty self-explanatory for other things. Magnifying glass zooms in or zooms out. If you drag, it zooms in. If you click while you're zoomed in, it'll zoom back out and things like that. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, practical techniques that you like to use in the sequencer window or playlist window. Maybe ways that you like to formulate songs. I realize the title of this is how to make your first song, but I'm just trying to get all the technical info out of the way. And then we'll start talking about actual methods of composition and look at some example songs and things like that. Check out my music on this YouTube channel on composergloves.com. I have free sample packs, free presets, all sorts of nifty things there. And have a blessed day.